Inductance in a coil. So we've had a little look at inductance and we've seen the way a coil um, in a circuit opposes the current build up and it does that by producing a voltage and this is all based on um, Faraday's law which said that the voltage um, was equal to the negative of the change in flux over change in time. So if you've got a coil then as a current flows that magnetic field in the coil produces a change in flux over change in time. Once it reaches a steady state, it doesn't do that. So I think we saw that, and we'll look at these curves a little bit more after, but what we basically saw was that when we have a circuit with a voltage supply, it's got a lamp and it's got a coil, as you turn this whole circuit on, so you had a switch, now you've turned it on, the current immediately tries to build up, but this little baby here produces a voltage to oppose that because of Faraday's law. So the actual current can't build up quickly um, and you end up with a current time graph like this. And we'll be having a look um, in another video at the time constant for that. But remember that's the opposite. That's Remember you had to remember that graph for the capacitor but that was for the voltage against time. So with the capacitor the voltage against time is slow to build up with an inductor it's the current against time that's slow to build up and it's because of the supposing voltage from the coil and that's Faraday's law saying that a change in flux against a change in time will produce a voltage to oppose that change and that's why we get the negative. So where what's that got to do with inductance of a coil? So this is inductance in a circuit. What's this got to do with inductance of a coil? When you build a coil it's like a capacitor. It has a set ability to do this and it's to do with the construction of the coil and the number of turns. And so we can use that to figure out um, how much voltage it's going to produce. So we don't just use this formula EL equals minus D change in flux over D change in time. We know that that change in flux in a coil or a solenoid is related to what? Well, when a current flows, it produces a magnetic field. When the magnetic field flows, and you've got a magnetic field through that area, remember we're talking a coil here, when the current flows through that wire, we get a magnetic field inside that coil. The magnetic field times the area is the flux. But ultimately, the only thing that's changing that, that we can say, that we can relate this change to, is the current. So we should be able to have a formula which has a new symbol, L, that's the inductance, times the rate of change of the current. We should be able to formula that does that. And we can do that. And once we've done that, and in another, if you want to watch the slightly more advanced formula on calculating the inductance coil, you'll see how we figure out that L. But you don't really need to know it for level 3, so this is enough. So once you've got that L, and it's measured in Henry's, um, and so L is measured in Henry's. Um, once you've got that, you can work out the voltage produced. All you need to know is the rate of change of the current. You've got your L, you've got your voltage. It's as simple as that, and that's the type of problems you're going to get. Um, a few things that you can say about L. L is also equal to the number of turns you've got in your coil times the amount of flux divided by the current don't need to know that, but you do need to know this. So that's the inductance in a coil.